Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. Today I'm going to create a painting of a pig for you using interactive acrylic and I'm going to do this in around about 10 minutes or at least I'm going to try. We'll see how far we go. So I'm starting out by spraying an A2 sheet of mixed media paper with water and then uh, I've got my interactive acrylics here so I'm going to grab some burnt umber and some ultramarine blue and mix those two together to give me a fairly dark bluish brown and maybe add a little bit more of the blue there and I'm not mixing them overly thoroughly but we'll see what we can create by using this flat half inch brush to blocking the silhouette of this pig. Now as I do this I'm keeping my brush strokes following the contours of the animal. So I'm trying to balance accurate observation with going fairly quickly to try and meet the 10 minute self-imposed deadline. Well, as I say, we'll see how this works out. It might might not work, but um, that's kind of the fun of the, the 10 minute experiment. Now, I'm fairly fortunate with my reference photo because um, uh, the feet are pretty much buried in, uh, in straw. So we've got a belly that comes down there. I perhaps went a little low with that, but uh, so spraying the surface of the of the paper with water, especially with the interactive acrylics, it uh, it means they flow across the surface of the painting really, really well compared to on dry paper. Now it's kind of a little bit of a lump in the silhouette there as we come up to the neck and then four legs the front of the, the top of the, the front hang on a sec, the top of the front of the front leg is pretty much directly below that little lump in the in the back there And then this guy's got some sort of white colouring on his leg. So we'll leave that bit of paper exposed. Then the other foreleg is showing through there. And then in front of this part of the leg, there's just a little bit of white showing through. And we've got kind of the underside of the jaw. I can block in. Now the paper's beginning to dry out a little bit, but um, because these are the interactive acrylics, it means that if I need to do further blending, even after the paint is touch dry, I can spray the surface of the painting with water and I'll be able to do that. So that's that's different to conventional acrylic where once they're dry, they're dry. Um, now, as I was chatting away there, I left a bit of, uh, uncoated, of an uncoated area there for the inside of the ear. And then the other ear, it's a bit difficult to tell in this reference, but um, that's peeking out there. I've actually moved it. I think it um, it's pretty much more or less in line with the front ear, but just a bit of artistic license there. I moved the ear to a slightly different location. And... And things are quite dark there, so put the paint on a little bit thicker. It's the beginning of the nose, leaving a little bit of a gap between the that outline and the dark I'm applying now to allow for the white colouring on the on the nose. 
also kind of comes down there a bit. Okay, so we've got the beginnings of our piggy. So what I'm going to do now is just take a quick look and see where I can perhaps add a little bit more in the way of highlights. So I haven't washed my brush out, but I've picked up some Silurian Blue and just mixing that into the brush that was left on the paint, on the brush that was left on the paint, paint that was left on the brush. I'm obviously trying to go a little bit too fast. So, but nevertheless, we'll keep going. So I just sprayed the painting with water again and looking at things now, I'm just checking my proportions. It could do with being a little heavier under the jaw there and perhaps a little higher up here and possibly a little longer along the back. I'm not sure, but either way, um, I'm just going to put some of this blue in here. Now that's not as light as I need it to be. So just grabbing some, uh, I think this is tinting white. I can't remember whether I put titanium white or tinting white on the brush, but so we'll just flick in a few little bits of white there. Uh, sorry, light blue there. Bring up the height of the back of the neck. And then just grabbing a little bit more white onto my brush in, in addition to the bit of the blue I had before. And there's the, the end of the tail. It's kind of coming up and sweeping around there. Put a little fleck of that lighter colour in there as well. And a little bit there. And then I'm going to add a bit there just to break up that line of blue I put in. Some bits there. couple of little bits on the nose and down here so it's not pure white on the legs that could have done with being not included that bit but that's okay all right so just going to clean out my brush Now I've got that nasty little run coming down from the belly, which I hadn't noticed, so just spraying that with the water. I'll lift that away. And I can probably lift out some of that as well. Don't want, oh, that didn't work quite so well, but that's okay. Alrighty, so now what we'll do is keep the paper moist down here and grab a bit of yellow, cadmium yellow, and mix it in with some of the white like that a little bit more white and we'll start to put in some straw Now this is coming out a little greeny because I had a bit of blue left on my brush. But you know that's kind of okay really for what we're for what we're doing. And let's grab some some of the white now and just so having to work at speed. Just put in some highlights, grab a bit of the red and mix that in with what I had there in terms of the yellow. And really that's far too red for what I want, so, but that's okay because what we'll do is grab some of the white and mix that in. Okay, and then we can maybe use a little touch of that on the end of the nose there. And a little touch inside the ear. And then again, just going to wipe the brush off with a paper towel and 
grab some of the burnt umber and mix that in with the reddish colour I've got there. And we'll use that as the beginnings. Just keeping the straw part of the painting nice and moist. We'll use this as the beginnings of some cast shadow. underneath the pig And then switching to a small round brush back into that very dark colour. Now it's difficult to see this little guy's uh, eyes in for the reference, but what I'm going to do is just try and hint at where they are. Don't want to make him look too angry. And then grabbing the pure ultramarine blue And then I've got a little bit of a run going down through the, the pig there. So I'm just going to spray pure ultramarine blue on my palette though, not on the, on the paper. And then having cleaned my flat brush out, just going to try and gently just put a little bit of light texture in there with that blue. And then with this very wet technique it's difficult to see exactly what you've got until until you let the paint completely dry but uh, I'll grab some of the burnt umber with my little round brush and we'll just add a few little jagged bits of straw Okay, and then we'll let that one dry. All right, well, let's try another one with a different pose. Again, I'm going to spray the surface of the paper with plenty of water. And uh, this time we'll start in a similar way, but I'm going to start with uh, pretty much pure ultra marine blue I think so we'll, we'll see how this works so there's the beginnings of the back end of our pig rear leg there that probably needs to be a little thicker and we'll bang in there's a bit of a lump there with it Oops. maybe make it a bit more where the tail is and then that comes his, bot the, his back kind of comes down in an arc there and then we'll block in the curvature of his torso. And then just looking at the silhouette, there's a bit of belly there. 
and then another leg round about there and then there's the sort of front end of the side of his body there there's another leg coming down ish round about there ish I should say and then blocking the rest of that let's just make sure we've got the line of this back reasonable something like that comes down to about there and then we've got an ear in there somewhere which I know you know I'm not it doesn't really show up with the way with what I've done so far but I, I'm probably going to pick out that sort of line in the paint a little bit without overly committing and we've got a frayed edge to this other ear and then we've got the front of his face or her face I'm guessing I don't know I think this is probably a she and again difficult to see in the reference but I think it kind of comes down a little more there and then I've got a front leg coming out somewhere there so I don't know if that's perfect but it's, it's not too bad so let's go back in now with burnt umber in the mix with the ultramarine blue and uh, I'll just keep the surface of the paint fairly moist and we'll go back in and darken some of these areas and correct where needed and as I'm doing this I can start to add a little bit of patterning to the body without being overly fussy about it well, there's no time to be fussy at all, really, is there, with the, with the 10 minute deadline? So just reload the brush. So things are quite dark there. And the inside of this ear is fairly dark. Bit of patch of darkness there and there and then this ear is fairly dark as well some more dark down there it's kind of a curved patch of pigmentation there bit of a shadow where the eye is another eye shadow this side of the leg is dark And then it's super dark in and around under here. Perhaps less so on the front part of the back. So I'm just sort of feathering in a bit of colour there. So let's clean the brush off. Now I'm grabbing some white and not mixing it in with anything but because the paint on the paper is still wet I'm guessing that some of this blue is going to mix in which, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world uh, to happen for, the, for this particular pig. Having a bit more white. Just adding some highlights to the ear there and there's some sort of tufts of white hair and then quite a lot of this back is pale in colour and rather more yellowy than the the white I'm putting in but I'll come back to that in a second
So I'm going to grab um, what's left of the white, having just washed the off, wiped the brush off, a tiny touch of the pink, of the pink of the red, to give me a pink. And then. Put a bit of pink there, a little touch in there, I think. And then there isn't really any here, but I'm, I don't mind putting some here and there, even if I feel it's going to work. And perhaps back there. And then we'll come in with that same light uh, brown colour that I used in the previous painting and we'll scumble in a block of colour to give this lady something to stand on and in Grab some of the darker stuff here. And then I need to put in a little bit of a cast shadow. So I'm just grabbing some burnt umber. Then we'll grab with the with the round brush, put in some paint. Still a bit wet, really. So need to let that dry, really. I think. All right. So here's the first ten minute painting, ten minute pig painting. Um, now that it's dry. And there's some bits of this I definitely like. So I like the lightness of touch around the head. So I don't think I'm going to do too much more to that. I don't mind the body too much either. Although, I mean, strictly speaking, we could do with some darker shadows here and there. So what I thought I would do is I've got an indigo watercolour marker. And if you happen to see the video last Sunday, um, I used some watercolour marker on top of acrylic to kind of enhance some lines. Well, I thought I'd do a similar technique and just enhance some of the deepest shadows with the indigo. So I don't want to lose the freshness of what I've done. The other thing I don't like is, if you remember, I tried to dis uh, disguise this run through the the midriff there. Um, and, you know, it worked to some extent, but not that well. So let's um, let's use some of this marker just kind of break that up a little bit put a bit of texture in um, and I think that works a little bit better now but we'll also come up here just break that line up here and there um, I could probably do with a little bit of definition around this the edge of this ear but I don't want to go too crazy because as I said I don't want to mess up the lightness of touch now the bit which perhaps hasn't worked quite as well is the straw, but you know, given the given the self-imposed time crunch, I don't think it's too bad. So we can just add a little bit of texture, not texture, um, just a little bit of line work, I guess, really, just to help convey the idea that uh, this might be straw or grass that the animal is in. And then for that one, I think, I think I'm think i going to leave that. Uh, I don't want to kind of mess with it too much. This kind of 
a, a looseness and where I've sprayed the paint with water there's this sort of speckling and I've even got some sort of lovely wispy bits coming off of the edge of the animal so it kind of makes it look alive and energetic so you know I'm fairly happy with that one I think you know for, for the time scale um, or well, I should say the you know the proportions aren't quite as they should be the belly should be a bit deeper and some of the shadows should be quite a lot darker but for a quick study um, that one worked out not too bad and then here's the other one which is also dry now now I do want to add a few little bits to this so but again I, I don't want to lose the the freshness of what I did before So one of the things I want to do is just get away from the purely blue and white uh, colouring we've got. So here's a bit of the yellow. And let's mix that in with the white and just a touch of the red. And let's see what that looks like. I put it on here that's perhaps a bit too orange so we'll grab just a touch of the cerulean blue mix that in that's gone a bit greener now as you would expect but let's see what see what it looks like when we put it on it's not too bad actually But to be honest, I'm sort of tempted not to do too much more to the animal itself. What I will do is come in. If I can see where I put them down. What did I do with this? Oh, I can oh, right there. Right where I left them, as you would expect. Um, so we'll come in with the indigo again and just put a couple of nostrils in and define the mouth a bit. Now I haven't really defined the eyes or anything very much but um, I think I kind of like it as is Perhaps a couple of pure white highlights. Um, I think I debated before whether I was using tinting white or um, titanium white. I was using the tinting white, as it turned out, which is what I thought. But uh, just thought I'd clarify that for you. Um, and now. So I was using tinting white earlier, but I'm just going to switch to pure titanium white just to add just a few bright highlights here and there. I'm not sure I'm adding that much really. I don't know there's something about the looseness of this one that I quite like. Um, I haven't gone into too much detail. I haven't really gone into any detail apart from those nostrils. Um, so I think I'm going to leave the animal there but what I am going to do is a couple of... well one thing that I did on the other, other sketch. So coming in with my watercolour marker again one of the things I'm going to do is just add just like I did on the other sketch. Just a few lines here and there just 
to show that the animal again is in grass or hay or straw, whatever it is. So maybe soften some of those in a moment with, the, with the, a wet brush. Let's give that a go. That's not moving any, around anywhere near as much as I thought it would, I have to say. Oh, well, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm you know, fairly happy with the, the lines as they are, but what I thought I would also do is... So earlier I was using my little ink tents kit, and I thought, well, I've got a lot of blue here. Uh, with this pig but I don't want to lose the kind of frayed edges and wispy bits I've got so I just thought I'd come in with this orange just put perhaps this is a sunset or a sunrise off in the distance And I think for this one, um, I think I'm going to leave. I think I'm going to call that one finished. I think again for a quick study, a quick sketch. I think this. I don't know. There's there's a certain amount of power in the image. It's definitely not without its flaws. Much much like the other one was flawed as well. But for a quick ten minutes expressive painting, and then a few little additions, I think it's. I don't know. I think it's got something. But maybe that's just me. Um, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.